What's up everybody? Welcome back to Three Floating Fight Night, our classic constructed gameplay series for flesh and blood. We have an amazing matchup for you between Sam on Azalea. Yeah. And Jacob on Dromai. Wah! Empress Dromai. All right, let's get right into the classic construction game. And as always, thank you so much to The Realm Games, the sponsor of our channel. And speaking of The Realm, if you stick around to the end of the video, we're doing a giveaway that is brought to you by The Realm Games. So stick the around. Realm. The Realm. Stick around for that. Three floating. <laughs> <laughs> What a skill. What a skill that could be. Are you ready? Yes, let's play some games. <laughs> Mother. Ooh. That doesn't feel good. Five. Smaller than 10. I will choose. <laughs> <laughs> I realize this isn't just a snap. Yeah. Go first every time. I'm gonna go first. Well, you know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go second. You're gonna choose to go second? Yeah. All right. What's up, great game? Good luck. We're doing a Pro Tour battle today. Two decks from the top eight of Pro Tour Baltimore. This is one of the quarter finalists, Jake Warburton's Azalea List. So it battled through a field of Lexis and Dromais and Old Hymns to get to the top eight in Baltimore, and we're gonna put it to the test today against a very spicy little Dromai deck. I'm playing Mara's finalist list from the Pro Tour, so I'm excited to play it. She's the goddess of Dromai. I choose to go first. I know that this is a race, but I think it's gonna be really good for me to set up some Ash and have some Dragon and I'm hoping to draw a dragon so then I can sort of place out a good dragon. He's gonna have to attack into it so it'll sort of buy me a turn. I'm gonna start off by playing a Sigil of Solace. Lame. Oh, uh, I'm at 43 now. Technically, right now, if you pause the video, don't come back and watch, I won this game. I'm going to activate my Seeker's Mitts. What are you looking for? Uh, When you're seeking. I'm seeking Ash. <laughs> cool. <laughs> seeking Ash. <laughs> I'm gonna pitch this Thamai. Uh, to prevent the one next damage, and it's gonna make an ash. Yes, it will. Uh, Shout out Mara coming up with this Seeker's Mitts. It kind of feels awkward to just blow this turn one, but I'm able to get a Moragai, which is a really good dragon that he has to clear. And I get to opt one. Kip. <laughs> Kip. <laughs> I'm going then to pitch the Flameskill Furnace, getting two resources. Uh, I'm then going to pay one and one ash for a Moragai. Oh, cool. I'm going to uh, just pass. Could have found a way to do it without destroying the Seeker's Mitts. So, blundered my turn one, but I just didn't see the line. Jacob is able to establish a dragon utilizing the Seeker's Mitts and keep some ash around. I was hoping he'd attack me with this mirror guy so I could filter my hand because I'm looking at three Bolton shots and a red in the ledger, which is good, but no way to do anything else. But smartly, he does not. So I'm gonna have to find a way to do something else. All right, start my turn. Tuna goes to one. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and activate Death Dealer to start the turn. Pitching a Bolton shot. Flip two. Uh, load a red Bolton shot. Trigger the Death Dealer, I will draw a card. Uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and play out the card I drew. Well, you don't know that. You don't know that, but I'll just tell you anyway. I drew that, which is nice, because it turns out my Bolton shot. <laughs> uh, my next arrow gets plus three, and I will opt one. And that is a card that is gonna go onto the bottom of my library, instead of the top of my library. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna attack Miragai for seven. Death Dealer is like one of the strongest weapons in this entire game. The fact that you can load an arrow and draw a card is ridiculous. When I load the Bolton shot, I have no way to give it go again until I draw the Read the Glide Path. And I'm gonna send the seven damage at the Mirror Guy, which doesn't feel good to send excess damage at the Dragon, but I have go again and I can use the reload to still fire a totally relevant on hit effect at him in Red in the Ledger. So gotta do it, gotta clear the Dragon and still present something that he's gonna have to block. Ah, Miragai is dead. Good, but uh, because it hits, I will go ahead and trigger the reload off of the Bolton shot. I will load another card into my arsenal, and then I will spend one to fire a red in the ledger at you for five. If it hits, you can only play or activate one action on your next turn. If it hits at all, it's a hero. I will block five. Cool. Took the furnace. Uh, that's the end of my turn. I'm gonna arsenal this card. I'm gonna pass it over to you. Red the Ledger, turn one. Love to see it, let's go. Yeah, I choose to block with Flame Skull Furnace because I want to do multiple things and I want to keep my cards. And this is a race, so I'm trying to race him. Stoked. That equipment block is at a premium for him. He's got, you know, his Arcanite Skull Cap that I'm gonna have to be watching, but to get the equipment block out of him on this first turn of the game is fantastic. I'm going to start off by, I'll throw a Ravenous Rabble at you for four. Also, I was going in. I will say no blocks. Any reactions? 
No reaction? I'll take four damage. Mm -hmm. Going to 36. I will then pitch a red card. Going to two, Ash, but Yender Eye. Okay. Comes in with an experience counter. Or an endurance counter. Or an endurance counter, whichever you prefer. I like experience. He's, he's experienced. He's experienced. He's experienced. In his endurance. Um, I'm gonna say you don't have a popper, Bink. I will pop it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well, very greedy. Uh, I will then. I mean, there's three in the deck. I know, what the <laughs> heck? Uh, I will pass turn, okay. Wow, that was super unlucky. Drawing the popper here is very great. It's fantastic. I'm super happy to see it. It feels like an old relative that I haven't seen in a very long time, and when they come over, they bring me treats. Ah, it's battering bolt. You know when your relatives bring you treats? Okay, Tunic goes to two. I'm going to start the turn, activate a Skullbone Crop, not a Skullbone Crop Trap, I'll activate my Skullbone Crop Trap. <laughs> I will uh, turn the face down card in my arsenal face up, and it's gonna let me opt one. Dang, that was a bummer turn for you to have a popper with the codex as well. I'm gonna just leave that on top. Then, I'm gonna activate Death Dealer. Floating one. Uh, I don't have an empty arsenal, so I can't put anything in there, mm -hmm. but it has go again. Leave me with one floating. I'm gonna go ahead and play Premeditate. Next time attack, action card hits it here this turn. Create a Ponder token. Then I'm gonna play out a Rain Razors. Here's a plus two while attacking this turn. Then I'm gonna play Codex of Frailty. I know what I want this turn to be. I want this turn to be play my pumps, grab my red in the ledger that I played last turn and play it again through the Codex of Frailty. But I have to figure out a way to make sure I have enough floating because my tunic is only at two. So what I'm gonna do is activate my death dealer and not do anything because my arsenal is not empty. But what that does is it allows me to put the bolt and shot into the pitch and float the one resource that I'm gonna use for the red in the ledger. Nice. I'm going to get a red in the ledger. I'm gonna just get the ravenous travel. Cool. The other thing that happens is I will create a ponder token and you will have a frailty token. I'm gonna discard Billing Mirage. Great. Uh, now I have one floating, which I will use to fire the red in the ledger. It's gonna come in for plus two, plus three, so a total of plus five. So this attack comes in for 10. 64. <laughs> I'm attacking you for 64. <laughs> I'm going to block three. Okay, any reactions? No. Take seven. Okay, I will make a second ponder token from the premeditate, <laughs> which I didn't even realize. And then this will be live, so next turn you can play or activate one action. I'm eating some damage here because I have a Miraging Metamorph, which is this great one for seven. Hopefully he doesn't have another freaking popper, but this feels like a pretty decent turn through the Red and the Ledger. It's probably the best turn I can have. At the end of the turn, I will bond out twice. I'm going to draw two cards. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to put this card in my arsenal. <laughs> I'm going to uh, pass it down to you. I'm going to pitch this sand cover making an ash for a miraging metamorph for seven. Yeah. This is the thing we talked about. Remember when we were like, pow, 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 We pow. were like, that would be really good after a red in the ledger. <laughs> you got two red in the ledgers and I got one miraging metaphor. So we can even get there. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna block three with this blue Bolton shot. Cool, take four. Take four. One, two, three, four. I'll go to 32. Cool. Uh, frailty will wither away. Jesus, come here, <laughs> come here Bolton shot. <laughs> I definitely feel like I'm running hot. I'm glad he doesn't have a lot of dragons out, but we're at somewhat, you know, our life totals are not that different. I, I gotta keep the pressure on and really keep him off dragons because if I'm not building a life lead and he establishes any semblance of a dragon army, it's gonna get really tough really fast. All right, start a turn, Tunic. Start a turn, Skullbone Crosswrap. Flip over a Spire Sniping. These both trigger and I'm gonna stack them. So when Spire Sniping is turned face up in my arsenal, I can look at the top two cards of my deck and put them back in any order and I think. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna opt with the Skullbone first. Put that on the bottom, I guess. And then now I'll resolve the Spire Sniping so I'll look at the top two cards. And then put them back in any order. I mean, shit. Those are both good. Skullbone Crosswrap here is already putting in a lot of work. When I flip the Spire Sniping at the start of this turn, I'm gonna be able to potentially see three cards. I can stack the triggers in any way I want, so I'm gonna elect to opt first, so that if it's a card I don't like, I can just ship it to the bottom, and then I can resolve the Spire Sniping trigger and look at the next two cards. But let me tell you something. What I see are two very good cards. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take, these are the two cards in my deck. I'm gonna put them back in this order. Mm -hmm. Then for the first time this game, Activate Azalea. Uh, so I'll put the 
card from my, I'm gonna do a Crown of Seeds impression <laughs> on, the on the bottom of my deck. And then I will take the top card of my deck and put it face up into my arsenal. If it's an arrow card, it'll gain dominance. What the f- <laughs> Third red in the ledger for my opponent. Let's go. Love to see it. How does Blake do that dance? <laughs> RNG gods are not my favor. I'm gonna play Lace with Inertia. Nice. So my next arrow this turn gets plus three. And when this hits a hero, create an inertia token under their control. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna pop the tunic, gain a resource. Uh, and then I will go ahead and shoot this red in the ledger. It does have dominate and it is coming in for eight. I'll block for three. Cool. In reactions, I will play out another rain razors. Nice. So I'll bump it up to 10. Uh, cool. So take seven again. Yeah. I'll go to 29. Cool. Uh, that will create an inertia token. And then I will just move to the end of my turn. And then I will just pass to you. I will pitch this Skittering Sands, going to three, for a breaking point, just five bland damage. In the chaos of feeling bad about the three red in the ledgers, I make a pretty big oversight, block with the nourishing because I just snap wanna throw it away because I'm not gonna be able to get the on hit effect out off of it. So I block with it when I probably should have just thrown it out instead of this breaking point that I kept in my hand. One for five versus two for six. It's one point of damage. Hey, sometimes that matters. I will say no blocks. Cool, okay, fine. One, two, three, four, five. I will go to 27. Uh, end step, I'm gonna pitch to Flamescale Furnace, make an ash, Ooh. and then inertia. And then I'll pass. Start a turn, tunic goes to one. I'm gonna activate the Skullbone Cross Wrap, flip and knock the Death Whistle, which is gonna let me opt one. I mean, I'll definitely, I'm gonna leave that on top, and then I'm gonna decide if I'm just gonna play Knock the Death Whistle. Because last turn I didn't have to play the Knock the Death Whistle, it's available for me on this turn in the arsenal. So when I activate Skullbone Cross Wrap, I see a dead eye. And so I have basically two choices here. I have another Battering Bolt in my hand. If I play the Knock the Death Whistle and grab an arrow to dominate, the last card in my hand is going to be the Popper. So when I pass the turn and don't arsenal, it's gonna be very clear that I have the Popper, allowing Jacob to base his turn around that, and he also might not even have any dragons. So on this turn, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and use Azalea's ability to basically draw me an extra pump effect rather than go for more dominated evasion damage. So I'm valuing more cards and more damage versus dominate and evasion. Maybe that's just super fucking dumb, but let's try it. Uh, I'm gonna activate Azalea. So I'm gonna put this Knock the Death Whistle on the bottom of my deck, uh, flip over a dead eye. Then I'm going to play the dead eye, pitching a yellow bolt and shot. I'm going to play out a Seek and Destroy. So my next arrow gets plus three, and if it hits, discard all the cards and destroy your arsenal. Then I'll spend one to load with Death Dealer. Load a Remorseless, which I will then draw a card from. Uh, then I'm gonna pitch this Battering Bolt on my other two poppers to come at you with a Remorseless. So this Remorseless is coming in for 11. If it hits, when you play an action on your next turn every time, you lose a life, and then Seek and Destroy will also be live. I'll block three. Take eight. Take eight. Right. No, no reacts, no reacts from me. Going to 21. 21. Uh, then I will arsenal my last card. Remorseless is live and Seek and Destroy is live. And then I will draw four. And pass to you. I'm gonna hit you with a Billing Mirage for three. Uh, when I attack with it, I get to make an Ash Wing. I have to pitch to it, so it's kind of Ash neutral. And then just lose life to Remorseless. I'll say no blocks on the three. Cool. Go to 24. And then I lose a life when I attack with this on. No, it's just when you play action cards. Oh, cool. Um, I'll bank you for one. I accept the terms of your bank. Nice, thank you. I'll take one and go to 23. Uh, I'll then play a dust up for four. This does not have go again. If it hits, I shall. Cool, and then one more life to Remorseless. Boop. I think I'm gonna block three. Take one. Take one. Go to 22. Ashwing. Go into three ash. And then I'll end my turn. Start of my turn. Tunic will go to two. Activate my Skullbone Cross Wrap. I'm gonna flip over another blue Spire Sniping. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna opt first and then resolve the Spire Sniping. I'll leave that on top. And then I will resolve the Spire Sniping. So I'll look at the top two. I'll just leave them both like that because I can't opt the second one. Then I'm gonna activate Azalea. Put this on the bottom. Put an Infecting Shot into my arsenal. So it'll have Dominate. I'm gonna go Seek and Destroy. Meditate, plus three, plus three. Seek and destroy effect, and then ponder on hit. I'll pitch my last card. Come with an infecting shot for 11. If it hits, make a blood draw, create a ponder at the end of your destroy end phase, destroy arsenal, and discard cards in your hand. Jeez. 
Block five. No effects from me, sir. Ouchie. Take six. Yeah, and get a blood rot. Down to 13. Blood rot pox token for you. Ponder token for me. Seek and destroy, live. End of turn, I will go ahead and ponder. That's just gonna plop in there no matter what. And then I will pass to you. Draw four. Your turn, sir. This turn we have a couple of options. Because Sam has most of the tempo off of those three red in the ledgers, me blocking poorly and misplaying, I have to kind of take a gamble here. The best line that I can see is if he doesn't block this snatch I'm gonna throw out so I can draw an extra card to then play out my command and conquer. I can see a world where Sam does block, but I think it's just as likely where he doesn't. So I'm hoping that Sam gets a little greedy, wants to keep his foot on the gas and doesn't block this so then I can at least either take two cards from him with the CNC or take his arsenal. I will throw out a snatch. Hmm. Razor reflex. <laughs> no, you don't have that. I have. I have. Oh, man. Is that supremely dumb? Are you saying to, to not block or to block? To not block. Or both. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, it all could be dumb. I feel like every decision I make, I'm like, that was either really smart or super dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there so many on it? <laughs> Why do you make so many tokens? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make a pawn. I'll make two ponder, actually. Here's a blood rock. Oh, actually, I got codex back. I'm going to um, also do another red in the ledger. Yeah, Azalea's British. Read your reflex! If you're scared, just block. I have big snatch. I feel like the discipline, the discipline play is block. Have you or a loved one ever been caught with a bad case of blood rot? We know we have. Frailty keeping you down. Can't lift the same things you used to. Yeah, we have been there too. Inertia. Constantly keeping your face down in the- Yeah, well, uh, have, uh, have you tried Realm? Realm Games. Uh, a brand new- Yeah. Yeah, look at this guy. He's so happy, smell the wonderful leaves of the blood rod with no concerns, not a thought behind those eyes. Go back to the younger you, the one that can lift to that frailty. Reframe the way you even think about inertia, like vacation. Call 1-800-1-800-1-800 to see if Realm Games might be right for you with the best prices, best events, Biggest possibilities. The Realm Games is not concerned or liable for any unexpected losses that may occur by not blocking a snatch. You stupid dumb, you should have blocked the snatch. Realm Games, here he goes about to not block the snatch. Anyway, call now. Realm Games, no warranty limited. Warranty, block the snatch. Realm Games. Uh, fuck it. No blocks. <gasps> okay, do you take four? Well, do you have a reaction? I do have a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine, I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm like, these are two sigils, actually. Uh, reactions. Snap dragons. Take four. Go again. One, two, three, four, 18. Draw. Yep. Is this a dragon? Not a dragon. But I'm drawing all my non billigan cards. <laughs> uh, bink, bink. I'm gonna pitch uh, two dust ups yeah. for a fancy command and conquer. Going to five ash. Oh, fascinating. This comes in for fascinating. Hey, that sucked. No blocks. All right, take six. Go to 10. End of turn, blood rot pox triggers. Would you like to pay three? I cannot go into 11. My arsenal is destroyed. It is a laze with blood rot. Pacow. You're up. I'll draw four. So, Command and Conquer. That was pretty good. That sucked. I probably should have blocked. Think of it this way. If I block with those two cards, the rest of his turn is dust up for four. But because I didn't block with those cards, the rest of his turn is Command and Conquer for six, which takes away my arsenal, which is worth at least three, maybe five. It's one of those blocks that you always think to yourself, like, this is definitely the discipline to play. Damage. Like, leave me at 11 after this Blood Rot Pox goes off. Like, we can push damage, and then if I get him low enough, I can just as alien to win the game. But this Command and Conquer, woof. Tinnick to three. First thing I'm going to do is play out a Read the Glide Path. My next arrow gets plus three, opt one. I'm gonna leave this on top. Tunic, gain a resource. Use that resource. Activate Death Dealer. Load in. Red in the ledger. <laughs> Go ahead and drop a card. I know what it is. Play out another Read the Glide Path. I will opt. I'll leave that on top. Because I took all that damage on the last turn, and I was thinking about this in the back of my head, the skull cap is now no longer active on my first attack. The play I was initially thinking about was Ravenous Rabble, and then coming for 11 more points of damage after that. But if I do it in that way, Jacob is able to go down to seven, and then when the 11 comes in, he can block three, six, nine if he has three, three blocks. Flame Scale Furnace, an Arcanite skull cap, boom, that's 11, he's blocked it out. So by throwing the red in the ledger first, when the skull cap is not online, I can still make the decision to do the Snapdragon Scalers and come in with the Ravenous Rabble. By doing the red in 
the ledger first, he doesn't have the skullcap available to him to block. So hopefully it's gonna make his blocks a lot harder. I'm going to go ahead and play out red in the ledger. Five plus six, so a total of 11. <laughs> skullcap, not online. I'm gonna do ravenous rebel and flame skill furnace, blocking for three. Taking- Do you have reactions? No, uh, no reactions. I have a defense reaction. I'm gonna do sink below, blocking seven total. I'm going to sink this card. Cool. Uh, I will, yeah, block, block seven. Yeah, uh, you're being aggressive, I too will be aggressive. I'm gonna activate Snapdragon Scalers. Cool. Game to go again. Uh, Game to go again. I'll take four, going to seven. Cool. Uh, then, I'm gonna play Ravenous Rebel. Oh. Really good shot. Comes in for four. Four. <laughs> I'll block for four. That's it for me. Okay. I think, I think that's the right play. I think I, I think you blocked how I would have start to show my hand. <laughs> I'm so low that I don't know if establishing a Mirage guy is really gonna help me. He's I feel like he would just ignore it and just throw out a huge dominated attack. I hope there's not a fifth <laughs> red in the ledger. I'm going to hit you for one. I'll take one. I'm gonna Arsenal pass. So this Ashwing. I don't care about this. <laughs> this is this is this is how Roger was. He was like, I don't care about this red dust up. I don't care about this little ash wing. Roger Bodie, this is for you. Start of turn. Tunic goes to one. I'm gonna activate Death Dealer. Load a drill shot. Draw a card. Place with inertia. Release the tension. Your next air attack gets plus three, and defense reactions can't be played from Arsenal this chain link. Place with inertia gives an inertia. So this is coming in for ten at you. I'm going to be aggressive again. <laughs> that's the look of a man. That's the look of an aggressive guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Block six. Take four. Take four indeed. No reactions. Yeah, I'll put a minus one counter on your base. Uh, uh, I will just move to the end of my turn. Because I blocked the Ravenous Rabble, I have some life to play with a little bit. I really want to establish this Chromai, and I can kind of threaten Letho next turn with the Chromai, hopefully keeping my action point. Swing in with Enlightened Strike, draw a card. RNG has to come into my favor at some point. Here's where um, the oh, flesh and- You're not Arsenal? Oh, okay. <sighs> it's a fucking popper. Or, it's the psyops of the century. <laughs> of course he has a popper, of course, because that's how Sam O'Byrne rolls. He draws and plays just fucking good. I'm going to play out a Chromai. Go for Ash. Uh, yeah, I got attacks. Bink. Do I wanna pop a this one? Oh, the other one's coming. <laughs> Gain an action point. That's one thing I learned from you, Sam, is don't play all my dragons out at once. I am going to pop it. Cool. Goodbye, Chromai. Oh. Uh, he had another popper. It's not the end of the world. It would have been cool to draw a card. You know, him being able to pop changes me from draw a card into just hitting for seven. At the end of the day, it's not horrible. I will hit you for one. Take one. Hit you for one. Take one. I will bottom a card. Uh, East strike for seven. No blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Shish. It would have been sick if you didn't have the popper because oh, I could have gone dude. five go draw card. I'm going to be able to send 10 damage back, which should take all the cards out of his hand. I think the only thing I can do here is go to one, put myself in the position of having to deal with an Ashwing every turn until I can kill him and just hope that I can find dominated damage in time before he's able to keep one card and then keep two cards and then win the game from there. <laughs> um, block one. Take six. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Go to one. That's the best I could do, guys. We put him to one. The classic saying, but he was at one. So he is at one now, which probably would have mattered with that nourishing emptiness. I wish I would have played. Misplays, don't make them. It probably would have taken his equipment or a card. So we'll see how much it matters towards the end. It looks like I'm dying. <laughs> Activate death dealer. Load up an infecting shot. Go ahead and draw a card. <sighs> that sucks. Five, go again, at you. Uh, block two, block for six. Okay, five more. Uh, I will, yeah, block five. Okay. Swing for one. Block for one. All right. Goodbye, cross route. Go ahead and activate death dealer. Load a bolt and shot, draw a card. Play out a seek and destroy, give my next arrow plus three, then I will 
knock the death whistle. I think it's just gonna be remorseless. Uh, so I will shuffle, uh, put that back on top of the deck. Then I can go ahead and activate Azalea, put this on the bottom, have this come in, give it dominate. So it will come in for a total of eight with dominate. Knock the death whistle here, going to guarantee that I can get an arrow on top of my deck that I can use Azalea's ability to put into my arsenal, give it dominate, ah, I die. And win the game. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and I'm dead. Misplaying the turn one, being able to keep the Seeker's Mitts around could have helped. Not throwing the Nourishing Emptiness. Swinging with the Yender Eye. I think I would do that still every single time. It's a race, and the odds of him having a popper are so small that early in the game. But I can definitely see an argument of like playing more conservatively. The Endurance Counter on Yender Eye is so good in this matchup, because this is great. This was close. This was very close. I had to, as I thought, I had to run really hot early. I did run really hot early. The two turns I drew the poppers were absolutely monumental turns to have poppers, taking away that incredibly hard to deal with Yender Eye before it could do anything, never having to worry about it. That's three damage I don't gotta worry about. And then on the Chromai turn, not only is that three damage that I block, I don't have to worry about Chromai and Ashwing, Chromai, Ashwing, Chromai, Ashwing. It's just Ashwing. So at the end of the day, uh, that's a lot of ways to say W. We got there! We got there! Come on the channel, back to back weeks, back to back wins. They said I couldn't do it. They, they, the, all the haters out there, they were, they were counting me out, telling me that I was nothing, I was too small. Well, to them I say, four red in the ledgers. Four red in the ledgers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a grinder. It came down one to three. So close, but no Ashwing. No Ashwing. No cigar. Ooh, just off the dome. Cigar? No Ashwing. No, no cigar. cigar. Come on. Yeah, that was a great game, guys. So, you made it to the end of the video. No. Which means Realm Games Giveaway. Realm Games Giveaway. Realm Games Giveaway. <laughs> All right, winner, what are we giving away? We are giving away a second box of Monarch Unlimited. That's right, Monarch Unlimited. That's right. So the Realm Games uh, is giving that away. And here's how you're gonna get it. Here's how you're gonna get it. You are going to go on over to Twitter and you are going to tweet out at 3Floating, that is T-H-R-E-E -E, floating and hashtag T-H-R-E-E -E, floating. Oh, we switched it up on you. One uh, week. In one week, we will pick a random winner and send that on over to you, Monarch Unlimited. We are about to come on to Dust Till Dawn. So Whoa. get that box, get those commons and, and majestics and get the footsteps, get you the know? Footsteps. You're gonna need oh, it for yeah. Prism. We're, we're all going into Prism <laughs> zone now, so. And Vincent. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't sleep on Vincent. Rune chance, bro. Yeah. Rune chance, they're don't, good. Don't sleep on yeah, Vincent. Yeah, yeah. We're Dust gonna pick- Till Dawn! Who do you think's gonna be the best hero come dusk and, and dawn? I think really? like Prism. So many things to discuss in the world of flesh and blood. Yeah. Check it out on our podcast also. See you there. Hey! Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood.